Welcome back to the watch list. Have you been looking at Uber and Lyft? Both of these are soaring double digits in percentage terms, while at the same time, they conducted a joint effort for a strike at major airports, US, 10 US airports today during this lunchtime period, Valentine's Day. Um, because, you know, obviously they will discuss what goes on here. Anthony Bartolacci is with us, Chief Strategy Officer, Sensor Tower. Sandra Cho, founder and president of Point Wealth Capital Management. Um, the strikes have been underway. I believe they were from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time or maybe 2 p.m. Eastern time. Likely finished at this point, but making the point, right? Lyft actually sort of gave some concessions. Um, I'll start with you, Sandra, your thoughts. So, I mean, we've seen strikes before, especially last year, and I think this is, you know, part of it. You see inflationary pressures, and Main Street is feeling it right now. So drivers, that, you know, are feeling that economic pressure, and they want to get paid more. I think Lynn handled it better than Uber, giving some concessions uh, and showing that could be straight off the bat. Um, but I do think that Lynn, in general, has some headwinds, not just uh, headline headwinds. Right. How do you think they handled this, Anthony? I mean, I mean, you're not going to see the company just come in and throw money at them, but they're trying to make a point. Yeah, uh, I think they handled it pretty well. But but you know, going to the data and trying to see what the data is saying as it pertains to the supply of Lyft drivers in the fourth quarter, we saw accelerating trends of individuals downloading the Lyft driver app, using the Lyft driver app and really significant gains in loyalty of the Lyft driver app. So, you know, as context to this strike that's going on, uh, we are seeing um, really good growth trends for the supply of drivers for Lyft, and actually more strength in the Lyft driver app than for some of its peer uh, ride-sharing um, names like Uber and DoorDash. So, you know, just, just setting the stage for what's going on today, uh, users are still going into the Lyft ecosystem wanting uh, to be a driver. Right, understood. I'm glad you mentioned DoorDash. We have that on the banner there. I mean, they also have striking drivers today. Um, we've seen the Uber stock soaring. Lyft also is at some new highs. Not the highest ever, but new highs. Sandra, where do you think these stocks are headed as you see both of these names? Do you like one better than the other? So Uber is 10 times larger than Lyft when they have you know, additional uh, revenue source with Uber Eats and then the recent acquisition. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, Uber looks like they are uh, poised well, especially let's talk about AI and their investing in AI. Lyft is not. Uh, so, you know, I am a bit concerned about that because Lyft is concentrating on computers and their you know, regulars, uh, regular users, but they're not really investing in AI like Uber is, uh, AI like automated driving, maybe the two thousand. So that's a concern of mine. They're really pigeonholing themselves. Um, and uh, you know, I'm concerned about that over the long term. Yeah. Which one do you think is best position, Anthony? Uh, I was just taking a look at the charts that went back to those IPO. They basically IPO'd around the same time. Um, and, you know, Lyft had theirs. It was soaring and sold off. And I think Uber had something to learn from that, that IPO. And then Uber went off. But Uber's at all-time highs, whereas Lyft is well off. I mean, I think it was 80% off those IPO highs or so. Um, which do you think is best positioned? Yeah, I think to Sandra's point, um, there's a lot of areas where I'd point to Uber's superiority. Um, on the U.S. exposure versus international SKU, about 75% of Lyft mobile app users are in the U.S. per sensor tower, whereas Uber's in the mid-teens. So Uber's very much more global. Um, we have a really cool stat at sensor tower called Audience Insights, which actually shows sort of the competitive dynamic in the U.S. between those two providers. And of the Uber app users, only one third of them um, also use Lyft, which is kind of showing Lyft's complementary status to Uber. And doing the inverse of that, starting with Lyft users, uh, we see about two third of them also as uh, adv uh, Uber drive or Uber users. So I think um, you know Uber is better situated, but we are seeing some some good trends for Lyft, which maybe just shows some strength in the overall category. 
Yeah, and the first ever buyback announced for up to $7 billion for Uber, and that also helped to give it this lift today of 12.7%. Lyft is gaining 33%. Thank you both for being with me. Truly appreciate it. Anthony Bartolacci, Chief Strategy Officer at Sensor Tower, and Sandra Cho of Point Wealth Capital Management. Good to see you both.